So this video is a biggie. We're going to build up a RAM. That's a random access memory. Now, we wanted to build up a 256 byte RAM, but 256 bytes would make Logisim run really slowly. So what we're going to do is build up a 32 byte RAM, but it is extendable up to 256. So if you have a faster machine and it runs better than mine, then you could potentially have a larger RAM, but 32 bytes is fine for the moment to get started with. So let's get it done. So before we get into Logisim, let's have a wee look and see how we're going to design a RAM. We're going to start off with a 4x16 decoder. So this takes four inputs and it gives us 16 outputs. These 16 outputs are going to get, be connected to vertical lines. So we're going to have 16 vertical lines here. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way along to 15, 16. We then take another 4x16 decoder, which will have four inputs and 16 outputs. But now we've got 16 horizontal lines. So 1, 2, 3, all the way down to 16. Now the thing to note is that at the crossover point here, these lines don't actually touch. You can think about this in three dimensions as these lines passing close to one another, but not actually touching one another. So that means there's going to be 16 by 16 little crossover points. So there's going to be 256 crossover points. Now what we can do is, within each of these boxes here, we can place a register. So this register here, this is our CPU underscore register underscore eight, which we have already designed. Now, in order to choose one particular register that we want to work with, what we can do is we can connect each register up to a horizontal and a vertical line. So for example, if we wanted to choose this particular register, then we could make the this vertical line go high and this register will be connected to it. And we can make this horizontal line go live and this register would also be connected to that horizontal line. So it means that each register of the 256 of them are going to be connected to a vertical and a horizontal line. So that means we're going to have a method of choosing each one of the 256. So this will become more apparent whenever we go start building it up. But there's one other thing I'd like to cover before we begin to Logisim. So what I've got drawn here are only two of those registers. So that's one of them here, and that's the other one here. Now we know that that register's got a set and it's got an enable. And we know whenever the set line goes high, it writes information into the memory location and whenever the enable goes high, it reads from the memory location and passes it on to the bus. But the thing to note here is that all of these inputs, they all go to the input of each and every one of the 256 registers. But nothing will happen with the input until we choose one particular register. And we make that choice via the horizontal and vertical lines of our matrix. So it means that all of the inputs are all tied together. All of the sets are all tied together. All the enables are all tied together. And all of the outputs are all tied together. So let's go ahead and we'll have a look at that in Logisim. And it'll become a lot easier once we see it designed and built. So let's not get lost here. What we produce so far is a one bit of memory, one byte of memory. We've got our enable section. We took our enable and our mem8 and we produced this little register. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take the register and we're going to redo it so that we can incorporate the ideas of our vertical and our horizontal choice. So I'm going to open this up and then we'll talk you through it. And of course, you can go ahead and build one of these for yourself if you want, or you can just use this one. So that's the CPU underscore reg underscore byte. So in effect, 
this is what ha this is what sits at the positions between the vertical and the horizontal lines. So what we've got here is just our CPU reg underscore eight. So we've seen this before. That's what we've designed. So let's go inside and we'll check and see if we understand what's inside it. So we've got our little memory cell here. So we set the information into memory, that is we write into memory, and the enable will read out a memory into the bus. And of course, we've put in one of these control buffers here as well, because we're connecting onto the bus, and when you connect onto the bus, we need to have this control buffer. One other thing you'll see I've put in here is a little pin. So that little pin there, I've just put it up, and it just works its way up through the hierarchy so that we can see what is actually inside this memory element. So it just gives us a way of looking inside this memory element without coming down through all the levels of hierarchy. So we've seen everything that's in here before. So let's go back into RegBite. So we've got a few extra gates added in here, so let's talk about these now. In order to choose this particular memory cell, the horizontal and the vertical lines will have to go live. So we'll have to have a connection onto the horizontal line from our matrix and the vertical line from our little matrix. Now let's say for this particular memory cell that the horizontal line has gone live and the vertical line has gone live. That means that we are actually choosing this memory cell. So if we put this through an AND gate, it means when both of these go high, we get an output here. So this is telling us this memory cell is going to be chosen and we're going to do something with it. But now, what are the options? Well, what are the two things that we can do with it? Well, we can either write information into the memory cell or we can read the information from a memory cell onto the bus. That is through the set and the enable. So what we do is we set up the set and an enable pins here. So let's say, for example, the set goes high. So in this instance see when the set has gone high, we're going to be passing through this OR gate. So it doesn't matter what the reset does. When it passes through this OR gate, this goes high. So that means that we've chosen the cell from this point here. And then we've chosen for this point here what we would like to do to the cell. We would like to re write information into this cell. Now, we also have the other option. We, we maybe we didn't want to uh, write information and maybe wanted to read the information onto the bus. So in that case, the enable would go high. In this case here, we'd be passing information from the cell onto the bus. And again, it goes through a unity gain buffer. So those are the two options. Now, there's one other thing here that I have added in, and you'll notice this this OR gate. Now what I want to be able to do is I want to be able to get in and reset the all two, 256 bytes all at the same time. So I've put this little reset pin in. So this reset in effect overrides everything. So it doesn't matter what happens to the horizontal, the vertical, the set and the enable. Whenever this reset comes on, we get a one that passes straight through into the set. And this goes in and it just resets the register. And this set pin gets taken out throughout the entire hierarchy all the way up to the top. So that's how our little one byte of memory works, which we're going to use for our 256 byte RAM. So we're going to take 256 of these. And we've said before that all of the inputs get tied together, all the outputs get tied together, all the sets get tied together, all the enables get tied together. So let's get in and we're going to have a look at the 256 byte RAM. Now don't get freaked out when we get in here, it's going to look quite complicated, maybe a bit cluttered. But all it is in essence is 256 of these blocks with all of their Inputs, outputs, sets and enables tied together and a couple of decoders, a vertical one and a horizontal. So let's get in and we'll have a look at that just now. 
So if we click on our next instance, which is CPU underscore RAM underscore 256. And there we have it there. So what I'll do is I'll zoom out a little bit so we can see what we have. So of course this is really quite small, so maybe difficult to see for you to see, but we'll zoom in, we'll have a look round about it. So we're going to have our 4x16 decoder at the top. And we're going to have 16 vertical lines coming down. And we're going to have our 4x16 decoder at the side here. And we're going to have 16 horizontal lines. And each little spot here is going to be our one byte of memory. So there'll be 256 of these. Now, let me zoom back in and we'll get through it in a wee bit more detail. Now, the first thing to notice here is that we don't actually have 256 of these little instances. I've only actually put in 32 of them. So there's 16 in this line here, and there's 16 in the, the second line. Now, the reason why I've only put in 32 is if whenever I put in 256, then Logisim will run really slowly, and it runs a lot, lot faster with only 32. So let's go in and we'll have a look at this in a little bit more detail. You see here that we have 8 bits coming in, coming in. And this is going to a little register. This is called the memory address register. Now those 8 bits get split into 4 bits which go to the vertical decoder and four bits that go to the horizontal decoder. So depending on the value you choose for the bits here, will depend, will determine which horizontal and which vertical line that we're choosing. So this here, in effect, is called the memory address register because it determines which byte in memory that you're going to go in and make live. Now, we can see here that we have our little cell here, so we'll drop down into this. And that's our CPU reg byte. And that's just our little cell that we've seen before. Now, let's go back out to this 256 byte RAM. Now, you can see here there's 256 of those. And one thing to note as well is that you can see why I've taken the output for each of those. I've taken the output out and this is an actual pin here. So this gives us the value that's held in this memory cell. So it allows us just to get in and have a quick look to find out what the values are rather than dropping in to the individual cells themselves. And you can see here that all of the resets are tied together and we've got all of the inputs all get tied together, all of the outputs all tied together and all the sets and enables tied together. Now it just looks really complicated because there's 256 of them. But it's no different from just building up two. So potentially what you could do is you could build up just two of them yourself and have a look and see how they work. Or I suggest that you open up this particular instance here and just have a little play about with it. And you can see here that we can choose a particular memory cell and also the set will depend to determine whether we're actually going to be writing to that memory cell and the enable would be determine whether we're going to be reading from that memory cell onto the output which is onto the bus. So that's all we have to say here about the 256 byte RAM. What I suggest you do is that you just use it as it is now with only 32 bytes because that's all we need for the moment. But if you decide that you want to increase the byte size, you can increase it yourself simply by copying the block here and just pasting it in. So I've left all of the wiring there so that you can extend it from 32 bytes to 256 bytes. So let's go in and we'll have a look and see what the 256 byte RAM instance looks like. So if we click on main, and then you click on the 256, 
you'll be able to draw in to drag in the instance. Now that's the instance there, and you can see it's quite large. I'll, I'll, I'll make the screen a bit smaller just in a minute. Now, when we click drop this down, you'll see that it doesn't appear instantly. It takes some time. So there it goes, that was about 10 or 12 seconds. So it takes some time for it to actually drop down because there are quite big um, uh, blocks and there's a lot of information in them. Uh, but it's not too bad, it's uh, only about 10 seconds or so. But we can zoom down a bit so we can see it, the whole thing. So that's the whole thing. And you can see it's split into a couple of sections. There's a memory address register which is at the top. And we have the RAM section here at the bottom. Now the memory address register's got a set and it's also got the address, so that's the input coming into the memory address register which choo chooses the particular um, RAM element that you're interested in. It's also got an able, it's got a set, it's got the reset and it's got the input and it's got the output. And you'll notice these little dots here. These are the outputs from all of the 256 bytes. Now the reason why I brought those out was in order to see and ensure that all of the 256 bytes are set properly. And you can see here the ones in black are fine, but you can see when I opened it up, there's a whole load of here, these here in red. So that just means that really Whenever we build a circuit up, we need to press reset in order to reset them back to um, a stable condition. Because whenever we open these up, because of the size of the circuits, Logisim sometimes gets in a bit of a guddle, and we have to then go and reset some of these elements. But we can talk about that in a different video. That's all there is for this video. I suggest that you download this 256 RAM and you have a little play with it yourself and you could even take this block and build it up and run a little simulation using it yourself in order to get used to it and see how it works. So that's been quite a long video, quite a difficult video, but it's well worthwhile and I think we've learned a lot from it. So thank you for listening. I'll get you on the next video. Goodbye.